Okay, guys, welcome to the Riviera 5400 Sport Yacht Platinum walkthrough. Um, if you're interested in how this boat test drives, we have just done that. Follow the link coming up on your screen right now. This is the walkthrough video. We're going to go right through the top sides, cabin down below, and check out all the facilities. My name's Dan Jones. Welcome to Dan's Boat Life. Um, hope you enjoy. This is built in Australia. This is the first Australian boat I've brought to the channel. I mentioned that in the test drive. I'm quite excited and I hope you guys are too because this is what we build down here. Um, some of the best boats bar none, put it that way. Um, starting on the swim platform, um, Simon, why don't you go up there and get all of this in shot. Proper, decent, professionally done swim platform. So these slots here, we have a lot of moving water down here, like where we are in this anchorage right now, it's not flat water, it's not the Mediterranean. We have a big ocean, comes in, lots of waves. So you need to allow for the air to pass through when you're at rest and also when you're dropping the platform into the water. It just stops that big air gap and that slapping happening. So you don't store the tender here. This boat is big enough for a proper tender garage and we'll cut to some shots of that. Um, these are great for hanging out and doing this. You can mount uh, rod holders as we see on this one and they will pull out if you need to deploy the tender and keep this area open and clear. We have a swim uh, ladder on the port side. There you go, three step swim ladder and clearly you could remove this to make it easier for yourself. Um, so you can see some of the styling of the transom here. This little step here, good for short man to get up and see more things but it's also a nice place to kick back and do a bit of this and it's out of the wind. So it's a nice hangout zone for the kids. We've got some cool blue LED lights which is gonna illuminate the back of the boat. These things got really, really gorgeous lines at, of a night time. Um, makes the boat a little bit safer so people don't go running into you but it also makes the boat look cool. I'd say that's a flag pole holder just there. So let's go up the starboard side and I'll start explaining to you what I see. Um, just got a cleat here, grab handle here, First thing is you got three steps and you open up the top step and you got your, your 240 shore power. That'll be 110 if you're in, in America. Courtesy lights on each step. And then underneath this little protector just here, you've got your button operations for things like the sunroof up there, the drop down platform just there and the tender garage just here. And it's all protected out of the weather. So it's gonna last a long time. Kid and doggy gate. Really decent one, open and close, one on each side. We come in, you got these, check out the size of these fair legs. Like, check out this stainless work just here. You have, you know, decent sized ropes through here, and then they will secure onto this cleat just here. Obviously for that, that's for securing the boat when you are at your destination or in your berth. Um, this opening hatch here gives you access to the IPS just through here. The engine room access is another hatch. Come on in to the cockpit area and just appreciate all this because this is Aussie boating. Um, I, I see a lot of boats. I see a lot of boats uh, made in Europe and they, they boat have a similar sort of attitude and keenness to boating, but we do do it differently down here. And I'm just gonna point out the first thing as a bit of an example. This is an Australian Barbie. Okay, so Notice a couple of things compared to some of the boats I've tested before. This is how we do it down here. We've got extractor fans, a proper amount of cooking space. We've got a decent sink just here, fridge and ice maker, um, storage for all your cleaning gear just here. We've got a bin accessible just here, and then you can also pull it out and leave your empty tinnies just in there. And it continues as we go in. The idea behind all of this is you have an epic outdoor entertaining space with all your mates protected from the from the conditions because we've got wind protection just here notice we've got the mesh shade just here it's going to knock out some of that uv and we've got the roof the actual roof finishes here so simon why don't you go over there and let's just try and get as much as much of this in shot as possible the actual roof design finishes here but nobody takes this option everybody goes for the extended bimini all the way out the back here and it's it's done very stylishly so what that does it gives you protection all the way to the back of this seat here so there's a lot of uv protection and probably a little bit of rain protection as well i could see some aft facing uh led lights there as well so this area becomes the heart of the boat 80 90 percent of the time we have more options 
as we go inside and being a single level boat, it's great for entertaining. So you've got that, we'll carry our way around. Um, I want to point out the first of the wing stations. So you have one option on, on port to operate the boat when you're at the dock and we have more, we'll continue. This back seat just here, we have proper professional fender storage. Got their own holders, more storage down below and they're where you need them. Another theme for Riviera, they think practical in terms of boating. Um, I'm sure in a lot of their design choices, they actually are thinking about how you use this boat because I come and I survey these boats on my brokerage business and I'll survey a 20 year old Riviera and it's gonna stand up a lot better to the test of time and the UV and the conditions that we have here. Decent sized drink holders that'll take a tinny with a cooler. Um, storage for your covers and clears underneath this seat's on proper gas strut and a proper, um, uh, I, don't know, I think this is a fiberglass base for the seat. So that's not gonna change over time. Um, this is access into the tender garage and we obviously have the normal access as well. We have another fender locker on this side. So you have one on port and starboard, they're securing uh, two fenders each. And then on the starboard side, we have the starboard wing station. Okay, so we've got the port wing station, we've got the starboard wing station, and we also have joystick up in the helm station. And there's more, which I'm gonna show later in the video. So check this table out. This is where you sit around for your alfresco lunch, and this will drop down, a cushion will go over it, and this can be your afternoon nap spot. So that's quite nice. Um, was there storage underneath these? I've forgotten. Yes, there is, yes. These will hinge up as well. Oh my God, it's heavy. Yes, great place for safety gear. Lots of storage in there. Let's have a look on this side. Okay, sensible place for sunscreens and other bits and pieces. Just there. Got our JL Audio speakers facing forward just here. We've got more speakers coming down. We've got a Samsung TV. I'm sure that's optional just there. And our engine access, primary engine access is through this hatch here. We'll do that towards the end of the video. Now, another practical, going back to what I was talking about before, how do you use your boat? Well, you're probably gonna start at the door and it makes sense to put all your batteries to fire the thing up at the door. So logical, but not every manufacturer seems to do that. So I've got everything from my emergency parallels, my auxiliary and my house and my engine start battery. So I've got port, starboard, parallel, house, auxiliary, and parallels for those as well. It's a 24 volt system on this and a gen set as well. And your primary button, so not everything, but things for you know, your, your port and starboard starts uh, there in this little locker just here. So that's logical. Um, next thing, these stainless steel doors, uh, they're just manual. They're solid as they're heavy and they work and they're gonna last 20 years. So. Um, yeah, just from an operational perspective, uh, the reason why this style of boat is uh, continuing to be so popular, you know, the popularity of sedan motor yachts has been uh, a given in Australia for a while, but um, being able to single hand, Ian, who's just inside, explained that was one of the reasons why he went to this boat. Being able to single hand and being able to socialise and entertain on the one deck is a big attraction. And so just having all this opening up and the, the through flow makes a lot of sense. So I think I've covered everything there. We'll go around on the four decks in a second. Um, oh, the sunroof. This opens just here. So actually, I'll quickly, you do that. Oh no, I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay, so there's two opening sunroofs. Um, this one just here. So we like our sun, but we don't like too much because it kind of gives us skin cancer. So, this is great, having the ability to get a little bit of through flow, see the sky, have some sun when you want. And we just have the one sun baking lounge up forward, which we will get to, but that's great. And notice it's not a glass sunroof, so when you close it, you really are gonna get some UV protection there. Easy to operate. Okay, all right, in we go. Let's check out the galley. 
Um, everyone, this is this is the owner, Ian. Ian, thank you for allowing us to tour your boat. I really appreciate this. So we'll try and keep this quick because Ian has an 11 a.m. appointment, so we're going to keep moving. Um, so uh, the actual centre, the actual heart of the boat is the galley. So this layout has been popular for some time, but um, I'm going to point out a couple more Australianized features that Riviera like to put into their boats. Um, let's just, we've already seen, you've got a fridge, you've got an ice maker. I've lost track of how many fridges there actually are on this boat. So one, two, three, wine cooler, and another one here. So, so you're really not wanting for cool storage and you're also in a boat that is suitable and capable for offshoring. Notice how all of the heavy opening doors have these securing latches. Little thing, but when you're bashing through some seas, makes a big difference. So let's just go around this section of the galley first. You've got all your light operation just in this fancy little switch operated here. This is a Corian bench top with like this waterfall effect. So this is white, it's very nice. Um, the, the top cupboards, Ian has actually optioned those to be in the white as opposed to the standard timber. And I, I like this because then it's not, they kind of disappear. You, your eye gets drawn into the center of the boat and it's quite a really nice first impression. So fridge, fridge, we've got um, bucket loads of storage in here that goes all the way in and underneath. And it's got a little uh, rack for your paper towel. So we had the Barbie outside, but you got your proper cooking inside. So more options with a little safety thing that uh, when you close this, it turns, turns the cooker off. So that's safe for all the kitties. We got an extractor fan just up here. We got an LED down light and we have some blinds to knock out the sun just here. One, two, three, all open. And there you go, all decent amount of storage. Um, cooktop isolator and then inverted outlet. So that's your 240 just here. Main sink is through here. This will also flip and turn into a cutting board and it has its own dedicated storage area underneath. Stainless steel, deep sink with a, uh, this is your freshwater tap and this is your regular tap. We've got about 800 litres of water on board. Underneath the Mille oven, yeah, forgot for a sec, um, is the Fisher & Paykel drawer dishwasher. So that's handy. And this is just a regular oven, I guess. I don't know if it's a microwave oven, Mille. My, okay, it's a microwave convection. All right, I don't do enough cooking. All righty, so uh, in here, underneath the sink, it's a logical place for all your storage. And then I won't open all of these, bucket loads of drawers, but just if we just have a look at this one, they've even thought about all the minor, or the major, in my opinion, details of holding all your cutlery in place. It's all Riviera logoed, as you'd expect. So now, just focus on this, Simon, oh, the weight in some of this hardware is noticeable, guys. So, little thing, but very practical. This is your bin. So we've got another bin outside uh, for when you're out on the aft deck, but you've got your primary bin here. It's actually, just have a look down there, Simon. It's actually a drained area, so nobody likes the bin juices. You could hose this thing out, th throw some bleach down there, or, or no, probably not bleach, because I'm just going in the ocean, but you know what I mean. Environmentally friendly soaps. Clean it and keep this area um, in a good condition. Just once again, people who are thinking and people who boat are designing this. So you can appreciate all the usable uh, preparation space here. You're really not wanting if you're doing a massive Christmas lunch, which you would do on a boat like this. And you could probably do all your drinks prep perhaps on this side. So we've got our wine cooler. In here we have alcohol storage, and then we've got more all your glassware individually and in little individual holders just here. And then this nice waterfall effect, but wrapped in the timber, which is like a light oak kind of vibe. And then as you look on the back splash just here, storage for more sunscreen, remote controls, you got your coffee machine, that's a logical place to put that there, and your sea zone. So this is how you control the boat. It's like the heart that, um, or the home page. Think of it like your home page. So, when you enter your boat, you fire up the power, you go to the sea zone, and you can literally turn it from essentially off mode to cruising. So if it's at your dock, 
you can just set it in like dock mode or, or away from the boat mode and it will just shut down all the systems that it knows need to be shut down. And then when you go cruising, you basically just turn it on and it just switches everything on that you're gonna need for the day. So it's very sensible, very user-friendly. Riviera's been using it for a while. I've seen that before and it's great. Air conditioning outlet here, more of these cupboards here with a down light just here, uh, drop down blinds again here. Fusion head unit just here. And from here forward, we're sort of entering the lounging area. It's worth pointing out that you've got like a leather wrapped roof with down lights, nice JL audio speakers, which are like hidden into the roof. And then they've, they've done this feature where the roof, uh, you've got this panel which is set up from the main roof and then these blue LED lights inside. Um, and it just works really well, it's quite nice. So coming into the L-shaped lounge, you would, this is an alternative area to come and eat if it was too cold to sit out on the aft deck. The, 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 you really are focused on entertaining out the back on these boats, but this is an option if it was too cold. Obviously this can all be air conditioned. This is a custom table that Ian, got made for this boat and isn't it lovely? I like the dark timber insets just there. This will drop down. I assume there's a cushion that will go on that as well. It's heavy and solid. And then you've got these leather wrapped grabbed handles just here. Um, and this will drop down electrically. It's not manual. Underneath these seats, I don't believe there's any storage under there because that's going into the accommodation down below. Um, then it, when we come on the starboard side, the logical place for the TV is just here. And we've got a little button just there. And here we go. Nice big flat screen TV. Also supported by huge steel pillars, or I think they could be aluminium, but clearly designed to hold a TV when you're bashing through some seas, is what I'm trying to point out there. A couple of fixed bar stools. So sitting around the bar or having breakfast is gonna be quite nice, beautiful views over the water, which is logical for a sedan style boat like this. I'll pop that down so you can actually appreciate that view. Um, and these will swivel around and you've got a footrest on each stool. Um, this panel just here is technical access. So that's just getting in underneath the sink. So they're thinking with longevity in mind when it comes to that. Now let's go to the helm. Um, safety gear, so uh, e perbs and like grab, grab, you know, stuff that you need to grab in, in a short notice could, could store here quite easily, but your primary grab bags would be out the back. Um, and let's just focus on this helm. This helm seat is amazing. It's electrically adjustable in all directions. It's, I think this is Alcantara uh, with diamond stitch and then leather, leather all the way around. And the design of this boat is such that the design of the hull, I mean, you can drive it pretty much all day long from this seated position. So um, it's possibly one of the most comfortable boats in this size category that I've ever driven. Um, what do I mean by that? The, the, the weight displacement and the V-shape that they carry forward um, allows this boat to pass through the swirl at a, at a speed of, you know, the optimal cruising speed is 24 and a half knots. Um, with low noise, really minimal bashing um, or no bashing, you just don't hear the waves passing under the hull. So you can be here in air conditioned comfort or you can manually open these side windows if you wish and you can drive for long periods of time and there's level attitude. So the bow doesn't really raise. And when you go through turns, the boat doesn't heal too much. I think they've specifically designed this boat and I'm talking without a gyro, gyro is an op option. It just has this wonderful motion. So you as the helmsman or woman can be comfortable for long periods of time. So we've got a little bit of storage um, just uh, tucked in under here. So you can put hats and things in there. This seems good for mobile phones. Got a drink holder just here. I'm gonna work my way around and just point everything out. Um, touch screen. Now they are made by Garmin, but it's actually a Volvo technology um, for these screens. So this is the buttons, if you don't want to do the touch screen, and this is your windscreen wiper operation. So screen wash and individual wipers. I like seeing that. I hate having to do the wipers on um, where, you, where, you, where you don't have individual buttons, so that's good. Got the cleverly designed 
electronic throttle, so it's set back from the wheel, so it's going to be ergonomic and you're not going to be reaching forward too much, getting a sore shoulder. And then the joystick here, you're probably just going to use this one um, minimally because you'll most likely transit out to the wing stations, you know, in, in a short space of time when you're using that. VHF just here, this is your Volvo uh, digital engine ignition, so ignition, start and stop. Um, this, we're going to talk about later in the video, this is the remote control with joystick. Never seen that before, very cool. Um, this looks like a more of an Alcantara finish that we see on the seat here. Nice dark grey colour, so it's going to stop any glare going up in your face. And then we've got the really big screens with the Volvo display, so you can go to the home just here and you can select all the different options from cameras, active captain, engine, vessel, in-reach, autopilot, fuel, media. It's essentially a home page for operating your boat. So you've got everything in there and I was using that on the test drive. Um, in terms of our buttons across here, horn, we've got our bilge pumps, well, we've got aft, engine, forward engine, mid and forward bilge pump. So that's four stations just there. Sunroof, now this is this sunroof, not that sunroof. So open and close, I won't open it now, it's just sunroof. Um, Compass, anchor, navigation lights, night and saloon. So that's all lights operation just there. This looks like the aircon, is that right? Yeah, it is the aircon. This is your primary Volvo Penta digital diagnostics display. This is your um, uh, spotlight control and you've got the SOS function there. So that means it'll go where you want or it can go in an automatic. This is your second C zone panel just here. So you've got the primary C zone as you enter the boat, but you can also operate it from the helm just here. Muir chain counter, so we've all seen those before, and the actual design of the bow roller and the design of the bow is such that you really can deploy, set and forget. It's not a flat stem bow where you worry about the anchor swinging and chopping some fiberglass out of your boat. Um, Riviera logo, uh, leather stitch wheel, it is adjustable. Underneath the helm, do I see anything? Fireboy manual release just here. The seat base is all just the construction for the elect electrics for that seat. Um, but this little area here is really functional for guests going up and down the coast or just cruising during the day because me seated here, you've got space for three people or more. Um, on long journeys, we could just converse with the skipper. We'll enjoy the view. We should have put the air con, it's getting hot now. <laughs> um, we can. You know, you can really enjoy this space on long journeys or throughout the day, and that's really what it's designed for. Um, I did mention, but I haven't, these all slide open. So let's quickly rush around the, um, the foredeck and show you. Got a couple of outlets forward for demisting the windows, and then aircon outlets at the dash, which I didn't point out, but they are there. We just don't have them on at the moment. Um, blinds all the way around, and a UV mesh screen externally mounted forward. So let's go up the port side. So they're, they're equal size passageways. So it's, it's not offset. Courtesy light, courtesy light, you come up those three small stairs here. And then in terms of safety factor, like that's where I am with my bottom and the rail comes up a little bit. So you can bump onto that. Oh, you could hold onto this too. This actually would be a really good handhold if you were in a rocking sea. Before we get there, um, we saw our aft cleats. This is our midships cleat. One of our midships cleats, because we have two with a rope protector or rub rail just there. And single diesel tank. So diesel in, water in, 3,000 litres of diesel. And there is breathers on the same position, but on the other side. I assume that's for the diesel tank. It seems logical. Um, you can see the design of the roof, super sexy with this color, oh my God. Hopefully it's obvious on the drone shots. This hull, this blue is amazing. It changes color as the sun comes out. I can't remember what it's called, but it's really nice. Um, so black finishing just here, stainless steel, beefy windscreen wipers, not the mild steel ones that rust in 12 months. These things are gonna go 10 years. So individually wipe it but just check out this area up here. So you stay there and get all that in shot. Sorry if it's too much light washing out. I had a UV thing for my camera, but I dropped it in the ocean. Um, so fancy sun lounge just here with a few features. One, two, three drink holders. And this 
see how that clicks? You can set the height. So you can do whatever you want, and then you, I think you probably just go all the way up, and then it comes back down. I'm not going to erect it, but this here is a proper little sunshade tent that would go to about this position. So you can sit in here reading a book, because it's or, or even you know reading on your, your iPad or something in the shade, because it'll be too hard to do that in the glaring sun. So that's kind of cool. And then there is a cover to protect all this, so you don't take all these cushions. Nobody wants to do that. Um, so at the end of the day, you just zip the cover over, and it is a zipper, so it's not gonna blow up in your face when you're going fast. It does not provide any hindrance to your visibility looking forward from the helm, so that's fine. One, two opening hatches. We'll see where they are when we get down below. Waste out, there's only one waste out on this boat because we have a 400 litre holding tank, just the one, probably vacuum flush toilets. We'll see them when we get downstairs. So it's all evacuated from that one point unless you macerate it into the ocean. Great big Muir anchor windlass. So we got the gal chain to stainless steel anchor and it goes down into this big chain locker. So on this side, we have the um, operation to control it from the bow. We've got, if anyone's, if you haven't seen these hoses before, these are non kinky hoses, get one. It will make your life easier. Um, salt water and freshwater deck washers. I don't know whether I pointed out there is also a salt and freshwater deck wash on the transom. So um, on the port side, because on the starboard side, I lifted up and showed you the shore power. On the port side, same thing, but it has deck washers. This is just for the clutch if you need to adjust the windlass. Um, proper, decent safety. So if you're going out to, well, if you're going anywhere, you would put this back on once the uh, anchor is uh, stowed. And we've got some plastic here. So you're not going to eat up your fiberglass as the chain runs forward and aft. And check out the size and the beefiness of this bow roller. Pretty big, very well done. And then we can see our bow cleats with these protectors just here, stop the rope digging into the fiberglass. Another note, I can say this from experience, um, the gel coat that they're using on these rivs, whatever it is, it's better than a lot of the European boats. Um, I test and I survey a lot of old rivs and they just stand the test of time better. I don't, I'd love to go to the rib factory and understand what they're actually using, I don't know. Uh, whatever it is, they polish up better, they last longer in the UV that we have in this country. So let's just keep going. We'll go down the starboard side. There's plenty more boat to show you. This is the other midships cleat. We looked at the aft midships. This is the forward midships. And note these courtesy lights going all the way down the boat. So the boat's gonna look super funky at night time when you have those on. It's really gonna complement the lines of this thing. Um, I didn't point it out, but the Radar mast is also quite a work of art. So we've got the domes. I don't know how much longer they're gonna be in, uh, in fashion because Elon Musk's Starlink's probably gonna take over all that sort of stuff. We'll do something different sooner or later. But we've got the radar, which is blacked out. We've got the horn. We've got the VHF aerials and the nav, uh, the nav lights, which have all been blacked out and it looks cool. Oh, I just noticed another grab handle. So this is actually a grab handle, but this design feature also is a grab handle. So if you were coming forward and in a rocky sea, you'd reach here, you can hold here if you need, and then you can, so if you're not steady on your feet, you've got options. Uh, but the boat, it's got a low center of gravity, doesn't really rock around much anyway. Um, let's go check out the cabins. Okay, we're gonna go downstairs and check out the accommodation, just pointing out this ledge here, good place for putting phones. One of the themes that I've noted on the construction of the timber work and the finishings, rounded edges. Don't always see that on a lot of boats and you end up banging yourself in a seaway and taking skin off. So that's noticeable. Nice stainless steel grab rail. Um, these stairs all have treads on them. And as you come down, you get into your first linen storage area here. Um, well, I believe this is linen storage. It seems logical. Good place for some towels. Um, same under here. And I got some fire extinguishers in here. Reason why that's, I believe, is linen storage is as you come down, you have this little atrium, I don't know what you call this, but you've got your master berth aft. Let's go straight to the master. And you have the washer dryer just here. So it's got its own little dedicated area. And then this vented door, which actually comes out like this. And then I probably shouldn't be standing there. Comes out like this. 
and then closes. So by the looks of this design, you can operate this with the door closed because you've got this vent here for airflow when it's in operation. And then you have more linen storage right next to the washer dryer. And again, here and here. Logical thinking about it. Well done, guys. Okay, so opening into the master, thick door, um, a magnet opener, and you go from the timber floor onto the carpet as you get down into the accommodation. It's a one four level and then goes up on either side. Just get all this shot in shot, Simon. So just appreciate this, guys. It's huge down here. It's really nice. We've got these whole windows on either side giving us views out full beam quite clearly. This is a king size bed. It's massive. You can definitely sit up in bed and you've got this soft finishings just at, at the bed head just here. A couple of down lights on this timber panel and then it goes to leather wrapped softness just here. So where, where we are now would be probably uh, like under the saloon or helm area approximately. Um, on the port side, you've got this opening uh, big thingamajigger here, which is for your throw cushions. So uh, a bed like this, you'd have it dressed through the day, throw the cushions in here when you get ready to go to sleep of an evening. I've got a bedside table with charging, light switches, drawers, and it's bedded in, so your phones and books are not gonna fall off in you if you're in a seaway. And then all of these drawers for his and hers storage of clothes, shorts, budgie smugglers, etc. So notice this big uh, bench top here as well. Nice place to lay things out. So you could even just throw your laptop or bits and pieces when you need to put them out of the way. Oh, the screen doing a funny thing. Okay. Um, the air conditioning outlets just here and here. I've got them on now, so th they are clearly working. Um, and we've got some down lights here and here and an opening porthole on port and starboard with an air conditioning control, just forward and another 240 plug, which is why I was saying this is a good place to put laptops and other devices, because you can leave them down here out of the way and on charge. Um, so you go over there, Simon, let's just have a look forward. So this is your, uh, we're looking forward now. This is what you'd look at if you're sitting up in bed and you got your flat screen TV. So TV, space for books. We've got a fusion control just here. And then uh, on this side, we have a very large timber lined and uh, internal light, <laughs> smells good, um, for hanging storage. So all your big coats uh, and et cetera will go well in there. We've got this head. Uh, yeah, let's just go and have a look. Come and this is the master head. So it's carrying this Corian water waterfall effect that we saw up in the galley through here. So you've got that on this panel here and the bench top here, but this is like a, a normal, uh, you know, sink, but it's quite fancy. And then we have opening just here. This one looks like it opens as well. And then we have a stainless steel opening port here and a ledge behind here, which is gonna be good for putting bits and pieces. Um, proper vacuum flush head, toilet roll holder. I can see an indicator, which looks like for the holding tank there. Multiple towel rack holders just there. And, oh, let's have a look. Oh, you, an alarm, ah, cool, okay. That's, oh my God, that's so handy when you forget to do that. So, uh, so what Simon just pointed out, all the portholes have alarms. So if you forget that they're open and you start driving, it's gonna let you know. Sensible, logical. Okay, uh, proper stand up shower and you just, okay, door opens inwards, I think. See if it opens the other direction as well, I'm not sure. It does, opens both ways. So no stresses about getting in here. Big stainless steel pole here. So that's gonna be secure in a seaway. We've got another ledge here, multiple areas for soap and this, the wet area, here we go, we've got the, sorry, hello. It's huge, like this is a decent sized shower. This one goes up and down. You've got your mixer tap here and we've got the Corian finish carried further through. And also on the floor, it's, that looks like the Corian waterfall effect, but in tiles, which is, which is really nice. But it's also, when you look at this wet area, um, this looks like a, a timber slatted roof. It's actually just fiberglass molding. This is gonna be really easy to maintain. So if you're in a humid environment, 
um, and you're worried about mold, don't worry because you'll just be able to clean it off quite easily with this finish that I see here. Access into the mid build pump just below the floor here. The bed is a huge big structure. I don't know if there's anything underneath. I think that's just fixed. Yeah, it is, okay. Now, isn't this lovely? It's quite big too. So this is a cool place to come down and chill when you're just getting away from all the guests or if you wanna read a book. You've got blinds on either side. You've got this large blind, manually operated, so nothing's gonna break down on you. But then you have an individual small blind. I'll send that all the way, whoops, okay. Send that all the way back up. But you have another blind for this side if you wanted to let fresh air flow through. So you could knock the sun out, but still have the air if you didn't want to be on air conditioning. So that's, that's sensible. Another um, bedside table, which we saw on the other side. And a what looks like a larger hanging locker because it goes forward with two lights now on the inside. And then more shelves, one, two shelves here, one, two, three drawers of considerable size and good construction light switches just here. Um, yeah, very functional and quite bougie master cabin. Let's go forward and check out the guest berth. So if we have a look in this atrium area, I don't know if that's the right word, but um, we have this uh, like material finish with this soft finish that wraps the walls. Then we have access to the holding tank. I believe that's the holding tank just via a, a lift up panel just there. And on the port side, we have the kiddies cabin. So this is an option, but apparently most people go for this. Makes sense because from a resale perspective, you probably wanna have the ability to sleep an extra couple in here. Um, stairs here for the kiddies. You've got this ledge here. So from a safety perspective, they're not really gonna be falling out of, out of bed and damaging themselves. I can see reading lights up in the corners, air conditioning, um, ocean air, blinds with knockout sun on all of the deck hatches. And the Perspex is also a um, tinted white, so you can't actually see through. And it just allows light, but knocks some of the UV down. And we have a large hanging locker with two drawers, 240 volt, 12 volt air conditioning control, everything you need. Like this is a really luxurious setup for a kiddies cabin, not bad. Um, we are on the carpet here. As I cross through this central area, I'm on the timber, and then we get to the day head, uh, which is into this Corian finish again. It's slightly smaller than the master head, but you do have a opening deck hatch here with the ocean air blinds. We've got the same sink that we saw in the other one. This is opens for storage here. It is air conditioned, same as the other one. So this area is always gonna be smelling quite fresh and it's not gonna get moldy after you've been having a shower. This is different. Got a nice little teak, I think that's teak seat. So that's kind of cool. Um, it might be a little bit easier if you were showering in a seaway to sit down and do it like this if that was necessary. You can store all your soaps and things here, another aircon outlet there. This shower goes up and down and we see the sta same stainless steel thick mounting for, this must be toughened glass uh, shower screen. Note that the two doors, got the tower racks behind this door, so you can have day access through here or private access from the VIP. So uh, you go through that door, I'll go through this door. So here's the VIP. Um, quite nice. So this bed's smaller than the master. This is, looks like a queen. Well, the other one looked, looked bigger than a king, to be fair. It was much beamier. But you can sit up in bed. You've got these lockers, two on either side, so they go up and down. You've got a ledge where you could put your phones on either side. Is there anywhere to charge the phone? Oh, yep, you charge the phones up this end. So I've got 12 volt and 240 on either side at that end of the bed. Um, you've got escape hatch, but also natural ventilation through this one, forward facing and down lights, nice quality nice light fittings, I note. And full stand up mirror with, when this door is open. So there's gonna be a lock on that door, which there is, I can see, uh, so uh, people don't accidentally walk in on you, which would be awkward depending on the situation. Then you've got air conditioning, nice, Lights, shelf, hanging locker, timber line, some Riviera jackets in there. Uh, we'll see that side. But we also have one, two, three, four drawers, which are gonna be great for linen and blankets for the cold nights. And 
we do have the blind down on port, but we have a the, the, the whole window visible on starboard. There you go. Um, nice hanging locker. Fusion control just down there as well. And the flat screen TV. I think I've covered it all. Oh, you've got the, the light on and off switches next to your bed. That's handy. I hate having to turn them off here and then sort of run and jump. Just the little things, the little things they're thinking about. So I think I've covered it all. Um, sleep six in comfort. Let's go check out the engine bay. Okay, so this is how you get down to the engine bay. The uh, primary access is through this hatch. You also have access through two other hatches above the IPS units. And Riviera have also designed this in such a way, if you ever needed to do major maintenance, just have a look here. This is one panel, which is separate to the rest of the floor. So, um, you know, with some considerable effort, it could be removed to get the whole motors out. Uh, one day in the distant future. So come on down. Uh, I think the best way to do this, just give me the camera. So you go down this stainless steel stairs. Uh, these are the IPS 1100, so they're uh, 725 horsepower each. I'm looking at the port side right now. So you can see the motor just here, and then above it, you've got the extractor fans. Behind that, in down in the corner, I can see what looks like a water maker. Then we get to some electrical distribution. So we've got inverter chargers, fuses. This looks like C-zone management just here. Battery switches, fridges, Dometic, air conditioning, another extractor fan. Now we're looking at the starboard motor just here. And then looking aft is sentry mounted genset, tender garage above that insulated. And you can see the uh, the motor to pull your tender out of the water. Probably got some crank batteries down here. I would assume they're crank. I noticed that each engine has double alternators, not single. Um, Raycor, are they Raycor filters? Um, uh, yes, yeah, so that's, that's your fuel distribution just there. This is, uh, looks like a, I think, battery bank, not sure. You leave a comment in the description below if I'm wrong. Um, oh, this is cool. Here we go, there's the sight gauge for the tank. That's handy. I love that sort of redundancy. And this is quite clearly the water tank and water tanks. So there's two water tanks there and there. The diesel must be, oh, here it is, centrally mounted, going forward, keeping the center of gravity where we want it to be. Very cool. The other thing worth noting, I'm just gonna turn this camera around. 54, it's more like 57 feet. I've got full stand-up headroom in here. So like where we are, oh, there's a fireboy system. Um, bucket loads of headroom here, even underneath this pillar, it's not too bad. So from a mechanics point of view, um, hopefully you guys are appreciating all this. This is, you're not gonna be struggling if, even for getting big blokes down here. It's gonna be possible. Getting around the motor, you've got somewhere to step just here and I'll just show you down the side there. So well done. They really do an excellent job. Um, let's go and have a look at the aft end. Okay, so here I am aft of the starboard wing station. There's a wing station on either side. I just want to point out more sensible use of space. See this uh, essentially plastic bucket. This is an excellent rope bucket, which is what it's designed. It's got quite a bit of weight there. So I'm just going to put that out of the way. And this down this ladder gives me access to the starboard IPS drive. So I'm just gonna crawl down there and then I'm gonna grab the camera off you, Simon. Let's just see if we can capture any of this for you guys. Because a little bit of a smaller one to get down, but pass me that camera. I can see the hot water tank just here. And then I'm just gonna angle this up so you guys can see in. So you can see various pumps, exhaust, and all the way across. So a little bit tighter access, but the key is you do have access. And let's just look forward. And that's where we were just before. So you're not having to crawl all the way down this starboard side here. You just can go through this hatch just here. Sensible. All right, um, Ian, thank you for allowing us to take your boat out. Really appreciate that. Uh, pleasure. Um, this is just an opportunistic uh, little chat, guys, because I've just learnt something, which is a new feature um, that I wanted Ian to explain to us. We've 
We've got the wing stations, we've got the joystick up the front. Um, one of the main reasons why you moved this boat is what you got in your hand right now. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I, uh, part of moving into this boat was I wanted to be able to handle it uh, single-handed. Yep. And uh, where we are here now in our berth, the nor'easter blows us out from uh, the front there and uh, with this control, I can uh, walk up the front and uh, put my uh, bow back on the uh, pylon and put my ropes on single-handed. So can you explain to us how this control works? Uh, so this is exactly the same as a pod. So yep. for those that are used to the pod system, you know, forward, back, and yep. uh, twist around. Yep. Uh, we'll move the boat around exactly the same as if you're using the pod. Okay, and uh, what are these other buttons? What's going on here? Uh, there's another one there for an anchor. Yep. Uh, but really, it's the uh, it's that's basically that button there is basically a pod, and it's dr driven off the uh, the front uh, yep. pod at the main okay. the main helm. And I guess the most important thing to do would be to put this lanyard on, because yeah. if you get that round the wrong way, <laughs> you're going to bugger it up. <laughs> that's right. Well, I think that's why it's got a photo oh, on the yeah, back. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah cool. Um, awesome. What is this product? Who's... Uh, it's Doc Mate. Okay. Uh, I spoke to Riviera, and uh, you know it's compatible. Obviously, it just. Uh, uh, um, sinks up to the front um, pod yep. and uh, takes over that uh, so it's as if you know you're us using the pod at the front. So. And did, did Riviera install that or did you get uh, that Doc done Mate after? installed it, it's quite a simple electronic installation. Okay, yeah, so it's so a bit of plug and play kind of stuff. Plug and play into the electronics. Awesome, so yeah. um, we've all seen the remote controls through shaft drives before, I just haven't seen one of these before, I'm yeah. sure they've been around for a while but it's just good because I bet you there's plenty of other people yeah. who didn't realise that was possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it works. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Hope that was useful, guys. Thank you. Okay, guys, that's um, that's the boat. I hope I hope you learnt a thing or two about what's going on in the Australian boat building industry. Um, we can't make cheap boats down here because people and stuff is expensive. We can only s survive making the good stuff. And Riviera really is at a premium top end, uh, an offshore capable boat that's going to last a long time. And I believe this 5400 is the style of boat um, that many, ma it, it appeals to the mass market, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so thank you. If you want to see how it drives, follow the link coming up on the screen now. We took it out in the ocean, gave it a little bit of a test. Um, if you are interested in buying a Riviera, you've got to talk to the guys at R Marine Sydney. There's really no other choice. They're the best guys in the business long-standing friends of mine. I've done business with them myself before. Um, they're located right in the center of Sydney, got access to all the best boats. My advice, have a chat to the guys down there. Dan Jones is my name. This has been Dan's Boat Life. Thanks. Support the channel. Support my Patreon. Give me a like, all that good stuff. See you on the next one.